I declare bankruptcy! New Year's is a time to celebrate. Unfortunately, some popular chains won't be popping any champagne this year. Is your favorite one of the 10 restaurant chains that won't survive 2023? We'll see about that. Ruby Tuesday. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Tuesday. Fast casual dining chains have always been quite popular. Places like Applebee's, among others, have been serving up American classics and homestyle comfort food for those wishing for a dine-in experience without having to break the bank. Of all the fast casual chains, Ruby Tuesdays has carved out a nice East Coast home for itself, with most of its locations resting in that part of the country. Offering classic American dishes such as ribeye steaks and baked potatoes for a affordable prices, Ruby Tuesdays has established itself as an East Coast force to be reckoned with. Unfortunately, the franchise has been on the decline for many years now, with many of its locations having disappeared from the U.S. landscape. The once mighty chain has seen its numbers drop from almost 1,000 locations to a mere 200 after the franchise was forced to declare bankruptcy in 2021. The situation doesn't seem to be getting any better for the chain this year, as more locations continue to close. This may very well be the end of the franchise that took its name from a Rolling Stones song. If only the chain had the successful formula for longevity that both Mick and Keith seem to have. Sabaro. I'm gonna go get me a New York slice. Pizza. Oh, glorious pizza. When it comes to the Italian delicacy, there's definitely no shortage of pizza places across the country. With mega chains, like Pizza Hut, Domino's, and Little Caesars all serving up their version of the beloved dish, as well as local pizzerias, a slice is never too far away. Sabaro's has been serving up New York-style slices since the 1950s, and at one time was one of the biggest pizza chains in the U.S., but the chain started falling on hard times as far back as 2011. The pizza chain was forced to file for Chapter 11 bankruptcy that year, but did manage to stage a comeback. Unfortunately, the decline of the once much Mighty Pizza Chain has continued. Many former customers have cited a quality decline as one of the reasons the chain has lost business over the years. Not good enough. However, the biggest mishap for the pizza franchise was the lack of a delivery service. While this may be an interesting quirk, the lack of delivery for a pizza chain is almost certainly a recipe that's bad for business. You may want to go grab a slice while you can, as this year may be the last time you can grab yourself a Sabaro slice. Jack in the Box this is a tasty burger. It's hard to find your place among giants. In the fast food world, burger chains such as Wendy's, Burger King, and of course, McDonald's have been standing tall as the most dominant fast food chains for years. That hasn't stopped other rival burger joints from springing up and trying to find their own place in the burger market. Chains like Sonic and White Castle have used innovation and unique menus to carve out a niche for themselves. For chains like Jack in the Box, well, they've been battling the big three right from the start. Jack in the Box has been in business since the early 50s, which puts them right in the mix of the fast food revolution. I'm kind of a big deal. However, while most other chains were serving up burgers in some form or another, Jack in the Box started offering a few differing items that set it apart from the others, such as tacos and even egg rolls. Despite this fact, last year was a less than thrilling year for the franchise. Another chain that's suffering from staff shortages as well as late labor issues that forced the franchise to reduce its hours. This has led to an overall decline in sales, which the chain countered by increasing their prices by 10%. These issues plaguing the chain have led to them recently closing some locations. The trend is not looking good, and this may be bad news for the burger chain. It's crazy to think that Jack in the Box may one day be no more. Just to be safe, you may want to pay Jack a visit while you still can. First time here here? Well then, take a quick second to hit that subscribe button. That wasn't so hard, was it? We thank you. The show goes on! Steak and Shake. Order! Uh, cheeseburger, please! Did you know that Steak and Shake has been around for quite some time? In fact, the burger chain has been around for close to 90 years. Yeah, that's longer than McD's, BK, or Wendy's. Wow. If you manage to stay in business for that long, you're definitely doing something right. Unfortunately, the chain has been on the decline as of late. Back in the mid-2000s, the chain experienced successive losses over several years. This forced the chain to focus on their main menu items in an attempt to fix the declining sales. However, 
the chain's financial woes resurfaced in 2016 and have been continuing ever since. Steak and Shake's locations have been slowly vanishing, and at this point, there are currently only 500 Steak and Shake outlets remaining. The chain has attempted to delay the seemingly inevitable by introducing a new menu, but sadly, this last-ditch effort may be too little too late for Steak and Shake. We may be waving goodbye forever to the chain by the end of the year, yet another beloved American fast food chain with a rich and storied history that may be reduced to just a memory. Hooters. I will have a chicken breast. Hold the chicken. Michael Scott said it best. What do I like about Hooters? I will give you two reasons, the boobs and the hot wings. Now, that may be a bit crass, but that statement is likely true for most who have frequented a Hooters location at one time or another. For years, Hooters has been serving up the aforementioned hot wings, along with other classics such as burgers to hungry patrons, all while servers in their signature white and orange uniforms provide both excellent service and a pleasant view. Unfortunately, the gimmick of attractive waitresses dressed in revealing outfits seems to have lost its appeal nowadays, as the chain has been on a slow decline for a few years now. Recently, an alarming 7% of Hooters locations around the country have closed their doors, resulting in revenue losses in the millions. The franchise has attempted to update their questionable image by having their staff dress somewhat more appropriately, but this last-ditch effort doesn't seem to be making a significant impact. Sadly, this may be the end of an era, making 2023 the year we witnessed the end of Hooters. Denny's. This drink, I like it. I know, it's great, right? Another! <laughs> Sometimes going to a restaurant for a bite with the family is less about the quality of the food and more about the comfort, convenience, and familiarity of the experience. These are all present with Denny's. Denny's has long been a place to take the family for a sit-down meal. The diner-style restaurant chain has been serving up American classics for 70 years. And while the food served up at the chain may not be what most would consider five-star cuisine, millions of hungry families have been stopping in for a classic, comforting bite for decades. Starting life as a donut shop in California, Denny's eventually grew and expanded across the U.S. and into Canada over the years, and has since become a part of Americana. Unfortunately, the classic diner food and friendly atmosphere are simply not enough to save the chain from possibly closing its doors forever. It is what it is. A major issue with the restaurant is a lack of staff. This staffing problem isn't simply a Denny's issue, as the restaurant industry as a whole is experiencing staff shortages. Shortages. Denny's was forced to close some locations last year, and if this trend continues, Denny's will sadly be a thing of the past. Quiznos. Capers, onions, what? and what? Uh, cream cheese. That's the sandwich? A good old-fashioned submarine sandwich is sometimes just what the doctor ordered. A sub, hoagie, or whatever your preferred name, the sandwich is simple and always hits the spot, and Quiznos Tasty Subs have been hitting that spot since 1981. Going head-to-head -head with sandwich giant Subway is no easy task, but Quiznos was willing to take on the formidable opponent and did so fairly well for the better part of 30 years. Unfortunately, the true sandwich king and proven victor continues to be Subway, as Quiznos has been closing many of its locations in recent years. The once thriving sandwich chain boasted a respectable 4,700 locations, but has seen the number of locations reduced to about 1,500. At that rate, the likelihood of Quiznos sticking around to the end of the year seems rather bleak. How sad is that? The Subway Quiznos rivalry may be ending a lot sooner than the folks at Quiznos would have liked. It looks like sandwich fans searching for an alternative to Subway may have to start looking for a local deli to satisfy their sandwich cravings, as Quiznos might not be an option much longer. TGI Fridays. We can get out of here and do jello shots at America's greatest cultural achievement. TGI Fridays. We've all uttered the phrase, thank God it's Friday, at some point in our lives. And what better way to celebrate the end of a long work week than stopping in at your local TGI Fridays? Seems fitting. After all, it's all right there in the name, right? Tell me about it. With its American cuisine and casual dining atmosphere, TGI Fridays was the perfect place for hungry patrons looking to call it a week 
week while enjoying appetizers and any number of adult beverages offered by the chain. At one time, TGI Fridays had close to 1,000 locations in total, with restaurants scattered across the United States and internationally with locations in Canada as well as the UK. With numbers like that, TGI Fridays was definitely a thriving franchise. But apparently, all good things must come to an end. Unfortunately, there are many factors at play contributing to the downfall of TGI Fridays. First, the chain made the controversial decision to keep its Russian locations active despite the country's invasion of Ukraine. This, combined with a rather outdated menu and the restaurant still feeling the economic sting caused by the recent health crisis, meant that the chain had no choice but to close 20% of its locations by 2022. The chain has come up with a contingency plan to increase their international presence, but stateside, the days of TGI Fridays may be over before 2023 is out. Buffalo Wild Wings Are these chicken wings or angel wings? God, I love these things! Buffalo Wild Wings are a thing of beauty for any snack food lover. The tiny, often spicy wings are great for parties, dinner, or simply as a messy snack any time of day. This is precisely the reason many folks enjoy frequenting fast food chains that specialize in serving up hot wings. Buffalo Wild Wings is one of those chains that made it their mission to dish out some tasty wings to their hungry customers. However, if you're a fan of the hot wing chain, there is a good chance you won't be able to enjoy your beloved wings this time next year, as the franchise has seen better days. The franchise has been struggling for a while now, so much so, in fact, that several locations across the country, including locations in Illinois, Florida, and Virginia, all closed their doors forever last year. This is, in part, because of the rising chicken prices, which is obviously the main ingredient used at the franchise, and one of the chain's biggest expenses. It's too much! It's too much! While there are many locations still operating around the country, the challenges faced by the franchise mean Buffalo Wild Wings is still in danger of disappearing forever by the end of the year. Golden Corral All you can eat. <laughs> All you can eat? Okay, it's pretty easy to figure out why Golden Corral has fallen on hard times. A buffet-style restaurant, social distancing, and health measures do not mix. However, even before 2020, the buffet-style industry as a whole was facing challenges. While many older people were still frequenting buffet restaurants, the younger generation were turning to delivery apps like Uber Eats and DoorDash. Easy peasy. And once 2020 hit, chains like Golden Corral took an even bigger hit because of their business model than did the average restaurant. Once all was said and done and restrictions were lifted, the Corral had lost close to a hundred of its locations. While many analysts predict the company will fade off into the sunset, with one even calling it a zombie company, Golden Corral seems to be going all in with a make-or-break strategy. The company plans on opening new restaurant locations and modernizing existing locations, as well as taking advantage of way and pay takeout, curbside delivery, and incorporating a drive through model to serve customers. While Golden Corral seemed to be down and out, those calling the shots think otherwise. So it looks like things could go either way. Either Golden Corral will be one of the restaurant chains that won't survive 2023, or the chain will rise like a phoenix with a new sense of purpose. Gotta stay optimistic, you know? Stay right here and tap or click another great video. Hit that subscribe button and ring that bell to join our notification squad.